Hello everyone, my name is Robert Haab from the Graz University of Technology in Austria and I am going to present our paper InfoSec – Unsupervised Semantic Image Segmentation with Mutual Information Maximization, which I worked on in collaboration with my colleague Patrick Knöbelreiter. In the next minutes, I will cover the following points. The motivation behind our work, a brief review on unsupervised image representation learning using mutual information maximization, our approach to unsupervised semantic image segmentation, a short discussion of the datasets we use for evaluation, and finally the results of our work. Semantic image segmentation is a common image processing task required by a variety of applications. Given an input image, we want to assign each pixel a class label. Current best performing approaches tackle this problem by using large datasets of pixel-wise labeled images. Algorithms can then learn features of particular classes by observing given labeled images. This knowledge can then be used to segment novel unseen images. Unfortunately, supervised approaches require large amounts of labeled training data and pixel-wise labeling of images is expensive. For example, annotating a single image of the Cityscapes dataset required 90 minutes of human labor on average. To avoid these expensive annotation requirements of supervised methods, we tackle unsupervised semantic image segmentation in InfoSec. We use a dataset of unlabeled images for training and aim to assign each pixel to one out of k classes. Training starts from random network initialization and we do not use pre-trained network backbones. Furthermore, we do not provide information on which or how many classes are visible in each image. Instead, we only provide the total number of classes in the entire dataset. In essence, the major challenge we face in our work is how to extract semantic information from images without human supervision. While many unsupervised image representation learning methods tackle this problem at the image level, we target the pixel level. Therefore, before introducing our method for pixel level segmentation, we briefly review image level representation learning. In these methods, we want an objective to train a network such that it outputs a representation containing high-level information of a given input image. To achieve this, we want to utilize mutual information, which quantifies the amount of information obtained about one random variable by observing the other random variable. A naive approach is to maximize mutual information between an image and its representation. However, encoding any noise from the input image in the representation can trivially increase the mutual information, but does not help our goal of encoding high-level information. The image shown illustrates this problem. The naive mutual information maximization objective can be maximized trivially by encoding semantically uninformative information about the local noise structure of the wallpaper in the background. This is already discussed by Hjelm et al. And as an alternative, they proposed local deep Infomax. In their method, a network is used to compute a grid of local features, each capturing patches of the input image. These local features are further processed to compute a single high-level feature capturing the entire image. Then, at each training iteration, the average mutual information between the high-level feature and all local features is maximized. Therefore, the high-level feature has to encode information that is shared across as many patches as possible. This suppresses local noise and encourages to encode high-level information. So far, we have discussed how we can learn a single high-level feature that captures the semantics of an entire image. And now, let us see how we tackle image segmentation in InfoSec. Our approach is inspired by local deep Infomax, with the major difference that we now want to learn a separate high-level feature for each class. This allows us to perform segmentation by attributing the influence of each image area to the respective high-level features. To this end, we perform at each training iteration two steps. At first, a segmentation step, in which we segment the image by assigning each local feature the high-level feature of its corresponding class followed by mutual information maximization step, in which we maximize the average mutual information between all local features and their assigned high-level features. 
The given picture shows an overview of our approach and in the next minutes we will discuss in detail how we perform the segmentation and the mutual information maximization step. In the segmentation step we take the following procedure. First, for an image, we compute local features covering image patches and for each class a high-level feature covering the entire image. Notably, the local and high-level features have the same dimensionality. Next, we compute a mutual information volume. The first two dimensions of the volume correspond to the spatial resolution of the local image features and the third dimension of the volume is equal to the number of classes. Each volume entry is given by the mutual information between a local feature and one of the high-level features. We then choose at each spatial position of the mutual information volume the index of the high-level feature with the largest mutual information. The resulting segmentation is then upsampled to the input image resolution. After discussing the segmentation step, we will now explain how the mutual information maximization step is performed. In essence, we want to maximize the average mutual information between all local features and the high-level feature of their corresponding class. A naive approach to tackle this objective might be to use an argmax on the mutual information volume to determine for each local feature the respective class index. However, this comes with several problems. At first, when we start training, the mutual information estimates are completely arbitrary due to random network initialization. Relying entirely on them by making hard assignments using an argmax reinforces incorrect predictions. Moreover, the argmax operation is also non-differentiable. To tackle these problems, we perform soft assignments instead of hard assignments during the mutual information maximization step. To compute the soft assignments, we perform the following steps. At first, we transform the mutual information volume into a probability volume. This is done by applying a scaled softmax operation on the volume, where tau is a hyperparameter controlling the smoothness of the distribution. We then define a function s that computes for each spatial position a soft high-level feature assignment. The assignments for each spatial position are computed as a weighted sum of the high-level features, whereby the entries of the probability volume define the weights. Using these soft assignments, we can finally write down our training objective. For all spatial positions, we maximize the mutual information between the computed soft global feature assignment and the respective local feature. The last point of our training process we discuss is how we perform mutual information maximization in practice. Importantly, our local and global image features are high dimensional continuous random variables. Consequently, the exact computation of mutual information is unfeasible. However, recently it was shown by Belgasi et al. that mutual information maximization could be done by maximizing lower bounds parametrized by deep networks. There is a monotonic increasing relationship between the mutual information of two random variables and the jensen shannon divergence between the joint distribution and the product of the marginal distributions. Therefore, one can use the Novosin bound on the jensen shannon divergence to lower bound the mutual information. In particular, the bound equals the difference between two expectation terms. The first term draws samples from the joint distribution and the second term draws samples from the marginal distributions. In both terms, a function t is evaluated. This function takes a sample pair as input and returns a positive real number. We can consider this function as a discriminator and possibly realize it with a deep network. This means, to tighten the bound, one needs to optimize the parameters of t such that the network assigns large values to sample pairs coming from the joint distribution and small values to sample pairs coming from the marginal distributions. The JSD bound was also used in local deep infomax for unsupervised image representation learning and we will utilize it also in InfoSec. After introducing an approach to mutual information maximization, we will now discuss how this can be incorporated into our method. Into our training objective, we insert the following JSD-based mutual information estimator. To create samples from the joint and marginal distributions, we take feature pairs of the same, respectively, different images. This is realized as follows. In each iteration, we take a batch of images from the training dataset. 
For each image, we compute the local and global image features. Samples from the joint distribution are then created by combining the local and global features of the same image, and samples from the marginal distributions are created by combining the local feature of one image with the global feature of another randomly picked image from the batch. Furthermore, for the discriminating function, we use the dot product. Before presenting our results, we briefly review some of the datasets used for evaluation. The first dataset, CocoStuff, is a subset of 52,000 images from the Coco dataset and contains 15 different stuff classes. While not discussed in previous work, we would like to point out some properties that make the dataset challenging for unsupervised methods. First, some classes are chosen rather arbitrarily. For example, the dataset contains several images of buildings, with many of them having doors and windows. Oddly, doors are labeled with a building class, but the separate class is used for windows. This is an arbitrary choice of the dataset and it is unfeasible to expect an unsupervised method to come up with this exact class proposal. Moreover, the dataset has a huge class imbalance. While the majority of pixels are labeled as plant, sky or ground, other classes are underrepresented. While supervised methods can counteract such data imbalances, for example with inverse frequency scaling, this poses an additional challenge for unsupervised methods. The second dataset we use is Coco Persons, a subset of the Coco dataset proposed in this work. Each image contains one or multiple persons, which is shown in various poses and environments. In the following, we present some successful segmentations made by our method. For both shown examples from Coco Persons, InfoSec was able to segment the depicted persons. Contrarily, IEC failed to create a reasonable segmentation. Similarly, for the examples shown from Coco Stuff, our results are considerably better than ISE. Moreover, the images also demonstrate how InfoSec can handle images containing multiple classes. To also demonstrate the limitations of our method, we present some failed segmentations. The first example from Coco Persons shows how our method could not separate the depicted person from the motorbike. The second image shows a scene that is rather difficult to segment. In the first image from Coco Stuff, a building was predicted as a wall, and in the last shown example, vegetables in the market scene labeled as food were predicted as plants. The depicted table provides a quantitative comparison of our method, whereas dataset entries with a trailing free were reduced to three classes. InfoSec achieves state-of-the-art results compared to all methods on all datasets. The leap is particularly evident in Coco Persons and the datasets containing many classes. Finally, let us conclude our presentation. We have proposed a novel approach to unsupervised semantic image segmentation. Our approach is based on mutual information maximization and inspired by methods from unsupervised image representation learning. Both quantitatively and qualitatively, we demonstrated strong results. Thank you for your attention and for more details on our work, we kindly refer to our paper.